Hello, uh, welcome to the virtual launch party for the exciting new collection, Interdependent Magic Disability Performance in Canada. I'm so glad that you could join us for the celebration of this very important book tonight. Uh, we have a lot of great work in store for you. My name is Jessica Lewis and I'm the Sales and Marketing Manager at Playwrights Canada Press. I'm a white woman in her 30s with long dark hair, wearing a light floral dress, uh, sitting in front of a wall that has framed books. I'd like to acknowledge that the authors and I are joining, from you, joining you from the traditional territories, some unceded of many nations, including those of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, Ininu, Ojigri, Den, Dakota, Métis, Lenape, Wendat, members of the Haudenosaunee Six Nations Confederacy, including the Seneca, and Anishinaabe, including most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. We thank these peoples for their stewardship and their leadership, both past and present. Here in Toronto or Tikaranto, the place in the water where the trees are standing, where I as a settler live, the original indigenous caretakers of this place were party to the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant, uh, which asks everyone to take only what they need, leaving some for everyone else. So with that and what, with what this event is about in mind, I've made a donation today to the British Columbia Aboriginal Network on Disability Society. They serve the unique and diverse disability and health resource and support needs of Indigenous people across Canada. If you'd like to donate to them as well, we'll post a link in the chat with more information. I'm forever grateful for the opportunity to work, play and share stories here on Turtle Island. Uh, the press is also grateful for the funding we receive from the Canada Council for the Arts, the Ontario Arts Council, the Department of Canadian Heritage, and Ontario Creates. Without their contributions, we wouldn't be able to bring you such wonderful books and host events like this. So I would like to also add a special thanks to my colleagues Annie Gibson, Blake Sproul, and Vey Cathy Swarin, as well as our board of directors. I have a few housekeeping notes for Zoom specifically tonight. We've turned on the chat feature, so you can send your praise to the playwrights. Uh, we encourage you to type in nice things after their readings. We've also created a document with the excerpts that will be read, so you can follow along if you like. Blake will post a link in the chat. We have live captioning provided by National Captioning Canada, ASL interpretation from Jenny Stevens and Jody Morrison, and audio description by Kat Germain. You can access the captioning and description in Zoom via the buttons for live transcript or interpretation at the bottom of your screen. Let us know in a private message if you requ require assistance. Uh, tonight's event is also a soft launch for our brand new custom-made gather space, which is uh, designed by Laurel Green and Rebecca Ballerin. We love our vir new virtual home. It includes an office, lounge, catalog library, where you can climb the shelves, discover new books, and a theater for all of our events. Uh, so some of you may have visited it already today, but after the readings tonight, we'll be directing everyone over there for an after party until 9 p.m. Eastern. It'll be as close as we can get to having an in-person event. Uh, you can chat with the authors and fellow attendees, explore the space and find some extra event content as well. Laurel, uh, who, one of the designers is here and we'll be showing you how you can access it at the end. So we hope you'll join us there. Now to kick off our readings. Uh, starting off tonight, we'll have an, an introduction from the book's editor, Jessica Watkin, and a recorded reading Jessica did with contributor Alex Ballmer from Alex's Play Smudge. So to introduce them, Jessica Watkin is a PhD candidate at the University of Toronto Center for Drama, Theater, and Performance Studies. Her research is engaged in disability artists and the way they create performance. She is a blind multidisciplinary artist, accessibility designer, disability dramaturge and educator. She lives in Toronto. Uh, Alex is an award-winning writer, actor, and educator, and named one of the most influential dis disabled artists by UK's Power Magazine. She has over 30 professional years of experience across theater, film, television, radio, and education. Alex is the former artistic director of Common Boots Theater, co-founder and artistic director of Cripping the Stage and is lead curator of Co-Motion Festival 2022, an international disability arts festival with Harborfront Center that is happening soon. And we will share a link for that later. Take it away, other Jessica. Hi, this is Jessica Watkins speaking. Thank you so much, Jessica, for that beautiful introduction to everyone. 
Um, I'll start off by saying that I am a white settler, female presenting human being with brown hair that reaches just past my shoulders, a pair of pink over the ear, what I call Princess Leia headphones and uh, black glasses. And I'm wearing a red shirt and behind me is what has been coined a joyful mess. So I'm the editor of this anthology and it is an absolute privilege to be here with everyone to celebrate this anthology. I've got a copy of it in my hands. Um, I think that like on first thing I wanna say is thank you to Playwrights Canada Press for taking a chance on me. Um, Annie in particular, Blake, Jessica, you've all been so patient and kind as we've kind of moved through this process. Um, this whole anthology is, essentially a response to me going through my theater degree as a blind student. And every turn and every teacher and every book I picked up, I was always asking, where are people like me? Where are the other disabled artists? How can I dream a future of being an artist in this space without any models? Um, and I was introduced actually to Smudge by Alex Balmer really early on. And that was the only play other than maybe Creeps by David Freeman, which isn't my favorite. And so when I left undergrad, uh, I was really interested in research and I ended up coming and doing my PhD at the University of Toronto. Within the next few months, I will be a doctor. Um, and so that's where soon my bio will not say candidate, it will say doctor, which is very exciting. But part of, part of my goal for this work was always to make a change within the theater community um, and to see disabled artists getting the clout, getting the celebration, getting the stages, getting the space that they deserve. And so this has been a long time coming. Um, a few of these artists are people who are featured in my dissertation, who I've learned from and researched from. I mean, all of these artists are artists that I've learned from. Um, and what happened was I just kept asking Annie where all the disability plays were. And she said, well, why don't you, why don't we do it? Um, and so that's this book. And so I'm, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so grateful to every artist who is going to read today, you're gonna to hear from. I'm really grateful, I'll, I'll point out that YJ Ku is the cover artist who is a disabled artist who is from here in Toronto and created this beautiful cover. Um, I think that when I, when I found the title Interdependent Magic, if you don't know, interdependence is this concept that is pretty much spearheaded in disability arts um, and disability studies, which is all about supporting one another. And when I came into disability arts community, I met Cyrus, I met some other art, I believe I must, met Chris Dodd, I met Ricky Entz and a couple of other folks. And I really found that relying on one another and that kind of quality, and it's really hard, it's hard to talk about, but the quality of recognition and support that you get um, and that disabled artists get and have and embody and, and you know, really cling to careful, calming, um, healing art. Um, and that's what I wanted to infuse this anthology with. And, and I think that these readings are definitely going to offer, offer you a snapshot um, of what all of those do. Um, the last thing I will say, um, something that I'm really grateful that uh, Playwrights Canada Press was down to do is that this book is available in lots of different formats. So that means that you can buy a physical copy, you can get a physical copy that you can open. But as Jessica said, I'm blind. So like I can't read my own book like this. And so I made it really clear at the beginning that I really wanted there to be an audiobook copy available and an ebook copy available as we did the launch, um, as a way to gesture towards how publishing is sometimes a barrier to, and like reading books is a barrier to disabled folks, predominantly folks in, in my community, the blind community. And so I just wanted to like shout out that that is fantastic. Not a lot of disability books are released with, not a lot of any books <laughs> are released with all of these accommodations um, attached to it. So I'm really proud of that. And I hope that as we move forward in continuing to publish disabled work and other plays that we can continue to think about the different venues, different ways we publish, the different, different ways that we can disseminate this work. And so I will stop there because you're gonna hear my voice again. Um, I'm gonna be reading a, a piece from Smudge, just the last two scenes from Smudge with Alex Balmer and Alex reads for the nurse. 
uh, which you will hear. Um, she amazingly memorizes her own plays. I don't know how she does that. Um, and uh, I will stop talking. Thank you all so much for being here. And if, uh, if, I, if you see me around in the after party, come and say hi. And that's the end of my thought. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, friend my of mine. Hello, friend of mine. My name is Jess Watkin, Jessica Watkin. I'm the author of Inter. No, I'm not the author. I'm one of the uh, authors. I'm the editor of Interdependent Magic, and I'm talking with one of the authors from Interdependent Magic, Alex Bulmer. Alex, welcome. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> Here to just uh, <laughs> give a little introduction to Smudge, the play that is in the uh, anthology. Thirty years ago, thirty-five years ago, I was writing some of these things. So. In some ways, I look back and go, whoa, mm. uh, that was me then. But there's actually, I don't know, I, I go through a lot of the same feelings and thoughts now, and it's 35 years later. Um, and I still live in a world that is not designed, uh, you know, is, is it, with a one size fits one design. I'm still living in that world. So I still experience a lot of those things, but with a very, I guess, different sense of grounding. And certainly with far more community around me. Thank goodness. Mm, like you. That. <laughs> our little, our little Crip family. <laughs> our Crip family. Well, with that, why don't we give them a little taste of what smudge can sound like? Um, and it's just a little taste. We're just looking at the last two scenes um, of smudge here, but uh hopefully you'll get a get an idea of what's going on in Smudge by Alex Bulmer. All right. Okay. <laughs> Good to go. Okay. Let's go. Uh, okay. okay. Three. I'm going to play the nurse. I'm playing the nurse, right? Yes. Alex is playing nurse, the nurse. Nurse one and two. Nurse one and two. Um, Jess, two. me, I'm playing uh, Freddie, who yes. is the blind character or is the person who is losing their sight in the play. All right. Scene 33 A different hospital. Freddie wakens in a white room. There is a big window which fills the room with light. The nurses appear upstage of the scrim. Nurse. Good morning, Frederica. How are you feeling this morning? Fine. You haven't been out of your room for several days. Are you feeling okay? Oh, fine. Can you spell world backwards? D L R nurse two. Hello, Freddie. How are you feeling today? Fine, thank you. Will you be attending our seminar? We're making fridge magnets at four. No, thank you. You haven't eaten in several days. Are you seeing things? Freddie, the police are coming to take you to our seminar fridge magnets at four. I don't need fridge magnets. I don't put little notes on my fridge anymore. The nurses leave. Freddie stands, looks out of the window. Scene 34, elegy. Freddie stands in front of the window. If I close my eyes and practice, Practice feeling with my heart, my soul, my desire in the dark. If I practice and touch, practice and love, I can stay with the light. The sun is warm. It's always been warm. My dear beloved sight, you allowed me to feel freedom in my body. You protected me. You loved a clear goal and the passage forward. The five ball in the corner pocket, the end of the dirt path to the maple tree, the walk across the bar to the girl. Slight, sight loved her best friend's smile, the space between her grandmother's front teeth, the red ring left on cigarette butts. The morning sun on crystal water, the laughing reflections in the sky. Sight drank the world in so 
deeply that no passing can ever erase it. You did not live long, but you did live well. In peace, may you find new life. Freddie hears geese flying overhead and sees them clearly with her ears. The entity watches the geese from upstage of the scrim. Freddie, look at the geese. The lights fade to darkness. End. Thank you so much, Alex, for chatting with us for a bit. And uh, we're definitely looking forward to commotion next week. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. We'll drop some links of the uh, upcoming Harborfront uh, festival uh the commotion festival in the chat uh, when folks are watching this live and uh oh, that's great that's thank great you again i appreciate so that for uh for contributing to this book it's so valuable so exciting and hopefully to the future of disability arts in canada cheers to the future of disability arts in canada and beyond thank you jess thank you alex all right <laughs> uh thanks so much uh jessica you also um uh, reminded me i didn't wave around my copy of the book <laughs> um uh so yeah we have the link to share the full video to uh, alex and jessica's full interview in the chat uh you can watch it on your own time as well as the link to the commotion festival uh next up we have the members of the Boys and Chairs Collective with us to present their play, Access Me. Dramaturge Debbie Patterson and directors Jonathan Sinan and Brian Postalian are here to introduce the piece and performers Andrew Gerza and Frank Hull will be reading a couple monologues. Unfortunately, performer Ken Harrower couldn't join us tonight. Uh, but now to introduce everyone who's here. Uh, Debbie Patterson is a Winnipeg playwright, director and actor. She's a founding member of Shakespeare in the Ruins, has served as theater ambassador for Winnipeg's Cultural Capital Year, and was artistic director of the Popular Theater Alliance of Manitoba. She is in demand across the country as a consultant on crip aesthetics and accessibility, and as a dramaturge versed in disability aesthetics. She was honored with the United Nations Platform for Action Committee's 2014 Activist Award and the Winnipeg Arts Council Making a Mark Award in 2017. She's a proud advocate for disability justice through her work as founding and current artistic director of Sick and Twisted Theater. Brian Postalian is an arts administrator, educator, and creator. As the founding artistic director of Recurrent Theater, Brian creates collaborative performances in immersive and interactive frameworks that reimagine gathering. Brian's work has been featured on Best of the Year lists, has received recognition for Outstanding Direction from Now Magazine and Best Production at Summerworks 2017, and has been nominated for Outstanding Direction by My Entertainment World. Brian is a se sessional instructor with the theater department at X University and has been a guest lecturer at the University of Toronto and Simon Fraser University. Jonathan Sinan is an award-winning theater artist. His most recent directing credits include Hokake's Iphigenia and the Furies on Torian Land, which is nominated for seven Dora Maver Moore Awards. Jonathan has worked across the country primarily as a director of new devised collaborative theater works with an emphasis on environmental and identity topics based on field research, autobiography, and the body. He won the John Hirsch Prize for directing from the Canada Council for the Arts in 2020. He's currently assistant professor in theater at SUNY Buffalo State College. Andrew Gerza is an award-winning disability awareness consultant and content creator. He's the host of Disability After Dark, the podcast shining a bright light on disability stories, which won a Canadian podcast award in 2021. He is also the creator of the viral hashtag, disabled people are hot. <laughs> Frank Hull is an established professional artist who proudly lives with cerebral palsy and madness, embraces his make mock heritage, and celebrates his gay identity. Originally as a choir vocalist over the past 15 years, Hull has distinguished himself as one of Canada's most pro prominent power wheelchair choreographers and dancers. He most recently expanded his repertoire to include live and digital performance. Hull's dance work has been presented several times at Art With Attitude. All right, everybody come on over and tell us about Access Me. Um, thank you for this thorough introduction, Jessica. And of course, another um, gratitude to uh, Ken Harrower, who couldn't be with us tonight, um, of which this project would not uh, 
happen without him. So uh, he's he is in spirit, and we hopefully can evoke his presence in in uh, talking about the text. Um, as Jessica mentioned, my name is Brian Postalian. I am a um, olive skinned male presenting person wearing a uh, green short sleeve shirt that looks like I have flowers on it, but it's actually goldfish. I know what a what a reveal. Um, I'm one of the uh, five, six, six co-creators of Access Me. I'm an able-bodied. Um, I don't actively identify as having a disability, uh, visible disability. And um, part of making the show together, which started oh, in 2015, um, and it probably even before then, I think is, is the like real, real origin story. But when we actually got into the room together, it began, um, those were the initial conversations. And to speak about my, my relationship to the play, um, I do think, as, as Jess Watkins said earlier, interdependent magic, interdependency is truly magical. And I'm so grateful as an able-bodied creator, the relationships and the stories we've built um, by being part of the process that we're cohab uh, cohabiting a world together uh, and to create um, new kind of utopic impulses as our group. Um, I'm gonna shortly hand it over to Debbie who will give an uh, introduction to the play. Um, what you're hearing is uh, the text from our uh, workshop that we did in 2019. Um, and we, we are holding with bated breath to actually put on the full production of the show in June 2023 in Toronto. If you don't live in Toronto or don't have plans yet, make your summer plans to come out. Um, and, and hopefully we can we can share that with Playwrights Canada Press when we know more details. But I'll pass it over to you, Debbie. Thanks a lot, Brian. Um, just a quick description. I'm a, a white woman in my mid fifties with long brown hair. Um, and I have pink earbuds and I'm wearing a black shirt. Uh, okay, this is the uh, opening stage directions for Access Me. The experience begins as the audience checks in at the box office. They're given a question card and are told to hold on to it until the start of the performance. The full list of questions is at the end of the script as an appendix. As they move from the foyer into the performance space, they're met by an attendant or a friend tendant, as we like to say. If the audience member is arriving already seated, the attendant will invite them to find a spot to settle in around the perimeter of the space. If they're arriving on foot, the attendant will offer a chair and invite the audience member to find a spot around the perimeter. In addition to addressing the basic access needs of the non-seated audience members by providing chairs, the attendant will also offer to carry the chair to wherever the audience member would like to be should they be unable to carry it themselves. The performers greet the audience as they enter the performance space. They introduce themselves informally and introduce audience members to each other as they encourage conversation. The audience, once seated, leaves four doorways at the corners for the actors to enter and exit through or to hang out in while when they want the audience, when they want to join the audience circle. The audience will have to adjust to accommodate each other as more people arrive, collaborating to create access for everyone. In this spirit, one at a time, the audience creates the seating area together. The atmosphere is intimate, adaptive, and a little bit chaotic. And now I'll pass it over to Andrew, who's going to read a piece from the script. Take it away, Andrew Gerza. Hello, this is Andrew Gerza speaking. Just a very quick description of myself. I'm a white man in my late 30s using a power wheelchair um, and I'm wearing a white shirt with a bright light behind me. And I'm Jonathan Sinan. I'm a white man with short blonde hair with a blue shirt and I'll be reading stage directions for Andrew, but I will also be turning my camera on. Close your eyes and hearken back to 1999. Do you remember 1999? ICQ was a thing. Y2K was coming. Uh. Friends was still on the air. 
new, 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 new. In 1999, I was 15. I was a huge nerd. I liked musicals like Phantom of the Opera, romantic comedies. Actually, though, not much has changed. Also, when I was 15, I was in grade 10, and there was a boy named Mike who I really, really liked, and I really wanted to do, to do things to him with my mouth. So much so that I even picked my class schedule to match up with his. I decided that I wanted to sleep with him and I came up with this elaborate plan. I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll have to pee. You see, normally when I have to pee, I have an attendant care worker who comes, who comes, takes me to the washroom, pulls down my pants and puts a urinal under my junk. But on this day, I would make sure there was no attendant around. So in drama class, I drink a lot of water. I'm sipping and sipping. After class, I bump into Mike and say, hey, hey, I really need to piss. Can you help me out? And he looks around and he's like, uh, uh, sure, man, no problem. He said, yes, yay. Andrew executes a flawless pirouette of pure, horny, adolescent glee. So there we were, walking in the hall. I'm in front and he's behind, so he can't see me smiling. Andrew rolls across the space, reenacting this moment of delicious anticipation. I'm brimming with excitement about this encounter. He's gonna pull down my pants and see my dick. And when he sees my dick, he's gonna wanna have sex with me right there. He'll hop in my chair and blow me and it'll be great. But just as this fantasy is about to go down for real in real life, the creepy vice principal comes up and goes, no, don't worry, Mike, I've got it. I'll help Andrew, it's no problem. <sighs> A few days later on ICQ, I saw Mike and I said, hey man, I just wanna thank you so much for helping me the other day, thanks a lot. And also, I want to let you know that I like you. And I'm wondering, do you like me too? And now we'll send it over to Frank. Uh, hi, um, my name is Frank and uh, Frank Hall and I identify as he, him. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And um, I'm wearing glasses and a gray shirt. I'm uh, I I do use a, my power chair most of the time, but currently I'm sitting on a sofa, and behind me is a green wall and a door with a curved archway. I'm going to read uh, from my monologue. In, uh, um, in the play it's um so uh here we go <clears throat> i met enrico the way i've met all the able-bodied guys in my life a soundscape of pulsing uh, <clears throat> sorry a soundscape of the pulsing beat of a dance floor at a gay bar frank takes center stage moving slightly to the music I wanted to dance, so I went to the barn, brought up three flights of stairs, left my wheelchair downstairs, and I'm dancing on my knees, listening to the beat with my eyes closed. I notice Enrico, and I look him up and down, up and down. He notices me checking him out, and he says, what you doing down there? What you are doing down there? My wheelchair is parked downstairs. Stand on my set. Okay. And he holds his hands out like this. Frank offers his, hand, his hands, palms up. And I stand on his feet and we dance. Frank sways, surrendering to the memory of Enrico's embrace. And we're like pressed up close and it's sexy and it's hot and we close out the barn 
He helps me downstairs to my wheelchair. We walk, he walks and I, and I wheel all the way back to my apartment. But he doesn't come upstairs, first date. The soundscape transitions to a distorted version of a 1980s power ballad as Frank transitions to another memory. And I'm at his apartment and I'm lying on the bed and I can smell him. I'm listening to Air Supply, making love out of nothing at all. He's at the inaccessible bathhouse that I can't access, having sex with everyone. And I'm jealous. The soundscape transitions to the beeping sound of a heart monitor in the hospital. And then we're at Wellesley Hospital and we kiss. The hospital bed creaks and he says, I didn't see you when I was healthy, not like that. Better late than never, Enrico. And we continue to kiss and he says, I don't want you to catch my thrush. Honey, my immune system is fine and I'd have to drink liters of your saliva to catch the virus. And we kiss again and he says, out of all my lovers, no one else allows me to be sick. No one else allows me to be Enrico Francella breaking every rule, always shape-shifting, changing, not fitting a mold, love for his courage, strength, his ability to see others and not through others. New journeys and new beginnings are never ending, remembering we are not here to see through each other, we are here to see each other through. Thank you so much, Frank, and to all of the uh, Boys and Chairs Collective. Um, just remind everybody that all of these pieces can be found in the book. Uh, you're just hearing snippets and there's so much more in the book. Uh, so uh, next up, we have a short recorded interview between Niall McNeil and Becky Gold, um, which calls on their interview, which was published in the book as well. Uh, I will introduce them and then Becky will come on to give an introduction uh, to it and then we'll watch the video. Niall McNeil has been involved with theater from an early age through his lifelong association with the Caravan Farm Theater. As a youngster, he performed in As You Like It, Romeo and Juliet, Bull by the Horns and Strange Medicine. Niall and Marcus Youssef have written two Jesse Richardson Theater award-winning plays together, Peter Panties and King Arthur's Night. Peter Panties received a Critics' Choice Innovation Award and King Arthur's Night received an award for best play by a large ensemble. Niall acted in Marie Clements' short film Pilgrims in 2013, which was screened at the Toronto International Film Festival and Telefilm Canada's Not Short on Talent program at the Cannes Market. Niall loves researching new ideas, writing lyrics and writing plays, and in 2020 completed his first documentary film, The Originals. Niall and his collabor collaborators, Anton Lipovetsky and Lucy McNulty, were awarded a 2020-21 Dan Fund Commission by Musical Stage Company in Toronto to work on the first draft of, of their new musical play, Cowboy Tempest Cabaret. Becky Gold is an accessible drama instructor, creative enabler, audio describer, uh, and PhD candidate in theater and performance studies at York University. She holds an honors BA in drama and English from Queen's University and an MA in theater studies from the University of British Columbia. Her Shirk funded research explores disability driven and interabled artistic practice with a focus on the value of interdependence, relation building, care and access intimacy in the creative process. Becky has also been published in the Journal of Public Pedagogies, Frontiers, a journal of women's studies and studies in social justice. So Becky, come on, say a few words. Hi everybody, this is Becky speaking. 
Um, I am a person with light skin and freckles and shoulder length brown hair. I am wearing a blue and pink floral button up and I'm sitting in my office in Toronto. Um, I just wanted to pop on real quick to say how grateful I am to have been able to interview the wonderful Niall McNeil for this anthology. Unfortunately, Niall is not able to be here tonight, um, but definitely here in spirit. And I'm just really grateful to Jess and PCP for uh, working to promote more neurodiverse representation in, within the disability theater sphere. Um, and that's all for me, thanks. Hello, my name is Becky Gold. And I'm Niall Patrick McNeil. Together we collaborated on a chapter for Interdependent Magic, where we discussed Niall's work as a theater artist. In our interview, we discussed collaboration, access and support, as well as Niall's unique and imaginative creative process. Today, I'm going to ask Niall a few more questions as a little teaser for the interview in the book. So let's dive in, Niall. Can you tell me right off the bat, where did you first start doing theater? I uh, think it was at uh, my first uh, working as a theater, as an artist. I started it since I was a little baby until I was um, I can't see the full, I think about 10. I was, yeah, 10 years old, and then I started theater, and I met a lot of people who, when I first started, I was really shy, and now I'm not, and I'm a writer, a director, and a son and lyrics composer, and when I first started, I was a little bit scared, but now I'm not, and that's my beginning of the theater world. So Nai, how does support work for you when you're creating a new play? What is helpful for support and accessibility? Uh, I like to create new musical plays. Um, to support, I do need its, uh, uh, it's kind of hard, for me to uh, to communicate to on my computer and start writing, that's I I, would, I need support for that, and and accessibility, I need a support to a uh, person who sits down with me and start uh, writing with me, like with. Um, 14 at his night, I would say Marcus. And Cowboy Campus, which is Debbie Patterson from Winpig. She's a dramaturge. She's my support person. Yeah. Awesome. So Niall, this video that we're making right now is going to be shared as part of the book launch for Interdependent Magic. So for everyone watching, is there anything else that you would like for them to know about you as a theater artist? Anything else you'd like to say? I do. There's a, a brief moment. Um, as I'm, uh, I'm doing a theater musical uh, drama, I think my goal is going to, to be for this book is all about uh, people who have different disabilities and why their their language um, the language and how they need support like I I have and uh, I'll be not going to be at Down syndrome with foundation. I may have to go back for my math tutoring there when 
yeah, that's my goal. So everyone in a, a wider world wants the book and yeah, that's my part of it. Okay, last question, Nye. Um, can you tell me what is your favorite thing about disability arts or being part of the disability arts community? Art, the uh, disability arts, they're, they're mostly about people who's just like me, projects. Uh, people want to do art, or people are doing outside from art. So you can go outside and be a disability, but you have to act uh, at your own age, you know. Uh, uh, I Sometimes I don't want to be nice, but we have to in, in a world to show all the disabilities how to be um, to be nice to other people. Like at my store, they're so nice. And yeah, that, that's so far I can say about how I have a disability. And uh, mostly uh, people in us, wheelchairs, walkers, let them go first. You can't just barge in go on, on a bus without a, dis, uh, a disability. That's kind of criticizing another. We will have, yeah. Yeah, great. Awesome. Well, I think that'll be it for right now, Nye, but it was nice okay. to chat with you. Mm -hmm. Should we say bye to everybody? Should we wave? Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye. bye. All right. Uh, so yeah, thanks again to Niall and Becky for that interview. Um, we're going to share a link in the chat so you can watch their full discussion on your own time. And that's separate to the interview that's in the book as well. So lots of interview content for you. Uh, next up, we have Cyrus Marcus Ware uh, reading from his piece, Antarctica. Cyrus Marcus Ware is a Vanier scholar, visual artist, community activist, researcher, youth advocate, and educator. For 12 years, he was the coordinator at the Art Gallery of Ontario Youth Program. Cyrus is currently a facilitator and designer for the Cultural Leaders Lab run by Toronto Arts Council and the BAMP Center. He was the inaugural artist in residence for the Daniel Spectrum in 2016 and 17, and is a core member of Black Lives Matter Toronto. Welcome, Cyrus. Hello, <clears throat> thank you so much for the chance to be here today. I just want to say that I'm actually uh, in uh, Takarano uh, in the part that was underwater at the time of the Toronto Purchase. So this part is the unceded territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and it's uh, really great to be here today. I'm just going to uh, start this. Um, uh, the, I'm just going to read an excerpt uh, from this play Antarctica. Um, but basically, uh, there's 11 people who were sent to Antarctica to be born in real life. Uh, at, at 10 of them sent there to stake a future land claim. And this play is about what would happen if Antarctica was uh, attempted to be colonized. <clears throat> Jess? Marcus, what are you doing here? Do borders mean nothing to you people? And it's Jessica. Ha. Huh. I've been spending too much time with Sabian. I guess they don't anymore. So why are you here? What, are you protesting now? No, I'm not one for protesting. Jess, do you know what I was doing before I was deployed here? Absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing of importance. My life was just getting and securing food and water and not much else, day in and day out. When the company offered me a free trip to this I see paradise. Of course, I went for it. Not that I had much of a choice. <laughs> I could care less about the company, and I certainly don't want to waste my time protecting it. I just want to have what I need and be safe. S safer? You know what I mean. Marcus, why did you come here? Jess? Jessica? I came... Because I guess I wanted, I wanted to convince you to come with us. Marcus, 
I, I wanted to convince you to come with us because, well, we, we need you. I, I think Sabian and I will kill each other if we're left to our devices. <laughs> no, but really, Jessica, come with us. It's not going to be safe here in the long run. Either we're going to be successful and set up the colonies and the rich folk are going to come and turf us or we fail and we die here alone after our governments crumble. Think about it. The crumbling? It's already happening. When was your last dispatch from home? They're off schedule, right? Mine are too. Marcus, I'm staying. Let me finish my work. I've got my log still to do. You're still doing your daily logs? Man, you are a company hero. Marquez, I'm doing what I was assigned to do. It's called working, and I'm lucky to have a job to do in this world. In case you hadn't noticed, the world is on fire, and we're basically the last chance for humanity. Our governments have trusted us with this duty. I'm serving the best way I know how. Jessica, you can't be this right wing. Not after what the governments have done to us all, how they fucked us globally with this climate change, how they waited until the last moment and then sent us here when it's probably already too late. I, I'm not right wing. I just believe in some things that you don't, like in our homelands, in the people we have elected to run those homelands, in the will of the constituents all of our citizens who are praying for us to be successful so that they will have a place to come to. If you can't see that as being important, we have nothing left to discuss. What about Sabian? Not important, Marcus. We have nothing left to discuss. Why couldn't they have waited until this place had thoroughly thought out? Marcus, we had to come here now. Everyone said it was time. The Antarctic plan had to begin. We had to come now. Don't you remember your training? Oh, the fucking training. It was a joke. 54 weeks in the Arctic, where the temperatures were 20 degrees Celsius and nothing like here. Learning skills I'll never need and missing the ones that would keep me alive here. A fucking joke. I just did what I had to do. I wanted to come here. I, I needed a secure place and somewhere to actually put down roots. I was glad to come here. It wasn't any patriotic shit. Patriotism? I'm not talking about patriotism. I'm talking about knowing where your next meal is coming from and staying true to that source. You know, there was Antarctic tourism. Rich tourists by the boatload. Can you believe people wasting their money on this crap while the world was on fire? My government vowed to put a stop to it by patrolling the waters more, by denying permits. I voted for them, and I believe in what they are trying to do. Come with us, Jess. Sabian would... M Marcus, I'm so tired of this conversation. You know, Jess, they protested. Me coming here, I mean. The ableist assholes in my home country didn't trust their lives, no, their livelihoods, to a disabled person. Didn't think I was up to the rigor of the job. Fuck, Marcus. No, Jessica, I want you to realize people are assholes sometimes. You are so willing to do anything for your country, but would they do the same for you? There's few real people out there. People who get justice and self-determination and the need for us all to get to make it, not just the rich few. <laughs> I do sound like Sabian. And speaking of Sabian, she's one of the few people who really gets it. I mean, Marcus, enough already. It's time to go. And just so you know, they weren't exactly thrilled that it was me coming here either. But I'm who they have, and I'm here to do my duty. I've got work to do. Goodbye, Marcus. Marcus hesitates, then puts his hands up. He leaves. Jessica starts back at her log. I remember when I had my first meeting with the company. At my meeting, they told me to avoid Eastern Antarctica. It was so much colder than the West due to its elevation. They told me that a one-room portable was being airlifted from my home to the East for my efforts. 
they told me to get settled and to begin to set up a life there. Living and establishing roots were one of the surest ways of ensuring the land claim. I was warned that the other 11 countries were also sending delegates and that they would do everything they could to stake the claim to try to push the boundaries of the treaty to watch out for tricks and pitfalls. Of course, I was nervous. New people, new places, leaving everything behind. But I believe in the company, and honestly, I couldn't imagine more loneliness more than my life at that time. I, I was ready for something more to happen beyond trips to the ration station and the pressures of a life of isolation. I was going to have a fucking purpose. She drops her tape recorder. They're nuts. They'll never survive. It's a fool's mission. What will happen to their camps if they leave? What will happen to their territories? It's going to be a massive land grab by someone when it's discovered that they're gone, that is. And that could take months. Months. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much, Cyrus. Um, I don't know if you want to plug anything coming up as well. Uh, you can um, do that here. Yeah, I'm like... just really excited about Commotion Festival. I have a couple of um, pieces in Commotion, a new large wall work that is celebrating deaf Olympian Courage Bacchus, also actor and performer. And so there's a large uh, wall work, wallpaper portrait of Courage that will be at Commotion. And then also, uh, a project called Black Magic, Black Power, which brings together all Black, Deaf, Mad, and Disabled uh, performers uh, making magic and uh, performing in uh, in collaboration with the Toronto International Festival of Authors. And it's all part of Commotion, which Alex mentioned earlier. Sounds awesome. Thank you, Cyrus. Right. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, last but not least, we have Chris Dodd here to read from his piece, Steffi. Chris Dodd is an Edmonton-based deaf actor for the stage and screen, playwright, consultant, accessibility advocate, and Governor General's Innovation Award finalist. He's the founder and artistic director of Sound Off, Canada's national theater festival dedicated to the deaf performing arts that takes place annually in Edmonton. His other plays include Please Remained Behind the Shield and Alicia and the Machine. Notable performances include Ultrasound at Theatre Pass Marai. In 2019, he was the recipient of the Guy Le Liberté Prize for Innovation and Creative Leadership from the Canada Council for the Arts. Take it away, Chris. Thank you so much. So first, <clears throat> I just wanted to give a self description and then I will be voicing for myself as well as signing my piece. So self-description, I am a white male in his 40s. I am currently in my basement um, right now in Toronto. I'm currently in a basement in Toronto right now. I do reside in Edmonton and I do have short brown hair. That is who I am. All right. So I'm going to be doing a reading from my play, Deffy. Um, it's just a short excerpt from my play, and I'm going to begin now. And okay, a weird is all the enemy. It's been bad dog. See, can break you a cup of blade. Just when you please drink, there's the Six months in sense down to a god. In this stirred up in me. Talking is an extremely hard to get in the way. I mean, talking is a word that's been getting very mouth. It's like the bottom's broken off. 
It's going on now about something that the dead world thinks about you. It's beating me apart and we're in. Maybe we might rather grandson. Or maybe she's something smart to die for us. I don't know. She goes on to strive with the strength. It means perfect and famous. Loves to be there. I think that we know I forgot. Take a sip of that booze down again. Instead, I realize things get me. I could tell them death. I could tell them that bad business. Someone thought something was not real or understood. I think it was instead. And I don't. Instead, I say, yes, you can Because why not? Doesn't every person want to get at the right? Doesn't every person want to create a donation? It doesn't matter if you're a dog, old, disabled, able body, straight, queer. Boots in the middle or one privilege man. Everyone wants to get that right. Why not there? Thanks, but I think that more steadily in the exam. Every few things was now the imposters. It's like zip and forgotten. I'm not Pinks with good parts, not my head. In the bus, I'd say, I am you go back and forth as matter until an old duck in your cup is empty, even though I didn't see you. Deep understanding. Because that, that can be the folks, the books, the folks, a bit of a book. Some things can't be about to object with stuff. There's no that. Other times, by good, there's a big, 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 Yeah, baby. Thanks for the Thanks so much, Chris. All right. Uh, if you are in Southern Ontario and want to see the rest of Duffy, uh, Chris will be performing it at the Public Energy Theatre in Peterborough on the 19th and 20th and at the Harbourfront Centre in Toronto for the Co-Motion Festival the 22nd and 23rd. Uh, the Peterborough performance from the 20th will be live streamed so you can watch it from anywhere. We will drop those links in the chat. Uh, so yeah, we hope you've enjoyed this night of powerful readings. All of these pieces are uh, that were included in the book are so incredible, if I do say so myself. Uh, the collection, Interdependent Magic, Disability Performance in Canada is available print, ebook, audio book forms like Jess Watkin told us before. Uh, and we will post a link in the chat for suggestions to outlets to where to get your copy from. Uh, you can get it from playwrightscanada.com, but uh, there's also other outlets like Amazon, Audible, Kobo, all those things. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're thankful to everyone involved for everything that they've put into this piece of work. Now, uh, before we finish up and head to the after party, I'd like to mention that we're hosting another event in two weeks to launch five more books. Uh, this next event will take place entirely in Gather. We'll have readings from Aaron Shields and Michelle MacArthur, Jeff Ho, Susanna Fournier, uh, Michaela D. Cesare, and Amy Rutherford. We will drop a link uh, to register for that in the chat. It's on Friday, April 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern. All right, and as I mentioned before, we're now going to move on to our after party. Uh, we're gonna celebrate these fine authors here tonight and their amazing work. Uh, so this after party will launch our brand new gather space, the Playwrights Canada Press Hub. Uh, we hope you'll 
meet us over there. You can mingle, explore the space, which includes our library, theater. Um, so you are our first audience in Gather, and so are you are our testers. Uh, so please let us know if you have any feedback for it. Laurel, one of the designers, will now share her screen to show you how to visit Gather, and we'll share a link um, in the chat to make it there and also for instructions on how to use it. Gather is best used in Chrome or Firefox, and we recommend using headphones. When you arrive, you can build an avatar, use your arrow keys to move around. Um, when you get close to someone else, your audio and video will connect and you can say hello. Uh, our ASL interpreters, Jenny and Jody, as well as our audio describer, Kat, will also be there if you need their assistance. You can uh, follow them uh, in Gather. All right. So once you're in the space, if you have any technical difficulties, you can message our tech support team there. Um, if you'd prefer to just have a tour of this place, you can uh, stay in the Zoom for a few moments and we'll show you around. Uh, if you arrive and it's at capacity, please refresh your browser and come on back and wait a few minutes. We'll let you in as soon as possible. Thank you so much for joining us tonight to help us celebrate this book. Uh, let's continue to have a great night.